Hey guys, and welcome to Subscribers Cars Showcase. This is episode one. Um, we'll give you a quick brief intro of what the format's gonna be, and then we'll get stuck in. So we're gonna go through four of your cars today. This is where I get to share your TTs, discuss them, discuss some of the things you've done, some of the things you love, some of the things you hate, and of course, look at loads of pictures of them, which is always great. Um, hopefully this will give you, the viewer, some more ideas, maybe um, some things you haven't seen before, and just a decent bit of entertainment because it's always nice to see. Uh, before we get stuck into that, let's jump into that intro. So the four chosen today were completely random um, and I have tried to choose four completely different cars because what I want you guys to do, guys, girls, and anyone watching, is I want you to pick one that you think is your personal favorite. If you only had these four to buy, which one would it be and why? So. If I tell you that now, we watch through the video, towards the end we'll have a bit where I talk about comments and I want you to share the one that you would have out of all of these and I want you to give one reason why down in the comments. Okay, so let's move on to number one. Now this is Stephen from Aberdeenshire. This is a Kingfisher V60 SG, 85,000 miles on the clock. And you'll notice it has a Project Zuo. Zoo, zoo. I never know how to say that. Project Zoo Gru, Grill, which is like a one bar grill painted in body color. Um, he's had the car for four years, um, only does a thousand to two thousand miles a year. Not because he can't do any more, just because he works away. So if he was here more, he would do more miles. Completely understandable. And some of the roads you have up near you are unbelievable. Um, let's go through some of the things he loves about the car. He loves the DSG. He said, you know, it gets a lot of stick compared to some of the modern cars, but he thinks it is absolutely wicked for what it is for the year. And that's brilliant. I mean, if you enjoy driving it, you've obviously got it sussed. And of course, you've had it for four years, so plenty of driving experience with it. Um, things you hate, the fact that it's getting old. So minor flaking on the lacquer. Uh, on two of the wheel arches, which will need attention soon. The battery has also been a drainage problem, so I need to dive down into that rabbit hole at some point. Stays on trickle charge, so not too much of an issue. Now, this is a really common one. I won't go into it, but we'll do a video on how to find a, um, a, a battery drain in a different video, because that's really important, especially as cars get older, things fail, and that can cause that. But I completely get that. Pretty decent love and hates like that. Um, is stock power completely understandable future plans plan to keep it forever i like that uh fourth tt over the last 22 years my first one was a silver one with blue alcantara interior nice um loved it but baby come along yeah completely get that realize i love the car as much as the baby so got another one this time it's a black v60 sg loved it uh sold it to a cousin who really wanted it then got a silver v60 sg i see a pattern here <laughs> love that too got divorced and that had to pay solicit fees now that sucks but to be fair looks like you got it right fourth time is a great looking car yep project zuo grill um crotro mud flaps cupra front splitter that's about the all things on the bodywork um really wanted to do the clear lenses on the front um uh, what else have we got here unsure about splitting the headlights well check out my latest video you never know Always on there. Keen to put 19s on with upgraded brakes. Now, the only thing I'll say about 19s over the 18s you've got at the moment is if you've not, not got great roads, you'll suffer. And Scottish roads, I'd probably stick with the 18s for a little bit more comfort and to stop destroying tyres. Um, saw your video on the V6 upgrade on the exhaust. Yep, 100%. Maybe if you can get another one and then keep your stock one, then if you don't like it, which you will. <laughs> You can swap that out. But that, I mean, let, we'll be honest, that is a beautiful looking um, Kingfisher V6. And it just looks impeccably tidy. Very stop. I mean, he's not done anything to it really, apart from the mud flaps and the front grille um, and maybe a couple of other little tweaks. But that is all bar that a completely standard car. And it looks fabulous. Uh, let's move on to number two. Number two is. Now, this is his name's G Smith. Now, he didn't give me his full name, but I'm guessing we'll call him G. Um, <laughs> he has had this 225 Quattro from new uh, Roadster, um, July 2002 in Morrow Blue. Wow, that is pretty awesome. Um, done just over 50,000 miles. He's on the TT forum as old guy. So, if you're watching this and you've been on the TT forum, you'll recognize this car, I am very sure. Um, he considers himself to be one of the uh, 
the purists as such, so he hasn't gone too crazy in the modifications. However, as we flick through these photos, you will see some tasty bits. Uh, most of it is reversible. And some of the stuff you may not have seen before. Um, he's gone for all the, in my, in my my personal opinion, all the right sorts of bits. So he's got Votex alloys, great looking wheels. Um, he's gone for decent quality brakes, uh, H and R um, front and rear. He's got spacers, Tarox Tarox brake discs. If you look at those, these are um, like a fan blade, but they are made out of a really high quality carbon steel. Really, really good. Really, really good brakes, not cheap. Um, KW Variant 1s, um, top mounts, ARBs, uh, forged polished strut brakes. Now these are rarer than hen's teeth. Um, they do not come up very often, and when they do now, they fetch one heck of a pretty penny. Gorgeous bit of stuff, polish up really well. If you can get hold of one, bite someone's hand off and grab it. <laughs> He's got custom LEDs, um, custom old guy stereo buttons. Have we got a picture of the inside? I believe we do not. We need to get some more pictures. Um, <laughs> rear light symmetry. He's got the left-hand drive, right-hand drive, um, reverse lights, 3-2 valance, 3-bar grill, and uh, a badge of 5 tip and some other bits. So what this is what I would class as sort of an OEM plus. Um, so where you take the car, I mean, if we stand back and look at this from a distance, it looks like a perfectly standard TT with Votex wheels and painted calipers. However, you delve deeper, it's got a slight suspension upgrade, so a little bit lower, better handling, better brakes. And then you open the engine bay, you've got some nice little trim bits, you've got a little bit of bling, but it just looks right. Like you wouldn't say that wasn't factory. Um, great looking car, silver wheels with a dark color car always looks really, really good, especially with the contrast of the roll hoops um, and everything. I can't really fault you there. Um, now, a little bit of story on this car. He's actually, he didn't give me the good and bags. He actually sent me this just before I said about this on YouTube. But he did say the car's been sold for 10 years because he moved and he's been doing renovations. And yes, it took that long doing my house up, is what he put. <laughs> but he's uh, had a bit of a, a sort of a buzz for watching the Parrot Bros recently and has got the fever and he's going to get it back on the road and come to some of the meets. Um, he's already got a list of things to do, of course, full service belts. Haldex and everything. He does say that he has been warming it up and taking it around the block um, periodically to keep it sweet, which is completely understandable. Ah, uh, Graham. There we go. Graham. Old guy Graham. <laughs> but yeah, had that from you. So that is what I class as an OEM plus. So it looks factory, but if you know what you're looking at, you can tell it's had a few little cheeky mods. Now, let's move on to number three. This is Simon S. Um, from the UK, Stoke-on-Trent, now Milton Keynes. He's had this car for 11 years. Now, what I love about these, this is a Quattro Sport. Now, because it's black, it blends in like you would not believe. You would not know, unless you know what you're looking at and you get up close, to any other person, that is just a normal black TT. Uh, of course, we all know it's got the V6 style um, body kit. It's got the um, black tipped exhaust. All the um, V6 styling, V6 style stylings are in phantom gloss black. Um, normally, obviously, it would have a gloss black roof, maybe a red body, blue body, whatever. Uh, but because it's black, it's all the same color. Uh, it's got those beautiful pole positions, which is what people rage after. Or, oh, however, I'm not sure what waist size you need to be to fit in them, um, as I've not tried recently. I'm sure I probably could fit. <laughs> But this is a nice factory car. Now let's have a look at things he loves about it. Wind resistance, as in when you come off the ex uh, when when you come off the acceleration and it just slips through the air. <laughs> yeah, they do go well, don't they? Um, things you hate, difficult one, paintwork and rust. Yeah, I totally get that. Twenty something year old car, um, it's definitely going to be on its way. But I mean, if you've had it for eleven years, you've obviously kept it pretty tip top. It looks lovely. Um, again, dark coloured car, silver wheels, looks great. Um, let's have a look. Future plans. Uh, modify, maybe spoke to Badger 5 uh, after the Nürburgring trip. It should be going in. Uh, they couldn't do it before. They said two to three months. Mm, what's going to take two to three months at Badger 5, I wonder? Uh, which is really interesting. I remember having this chat with Simon. Um, he was going to get some bits and bobs done after watching one of my other videos. I know. It's a dangerous game. Watch one and then you think, oh, I could do that. And then you're on the computer at three o'clock in the morning buying things. Um, <laughs> uh, some of the things he's had done, it's had a remap. 
I think, to be fair, there's probably not that many TTs that have had more than one or two owners that haven't had a remap at some point in their life. Uh, upgraded, upgraded distant pads, uh, forge engine parts, forge intercooler. Nice. Um, pilot sport tires, yeah, got to have the good ones, especially with the old QS. The wheels are slightly wider, make the most of that. Uh, wind deflector to front brakes. Nice. Very nice. Um, things about to be fitted, cameras, sat nav, comfort indicators, yeah, lovely. And then things to do, he's got a nice little thing. Uh, what we got, fix or replace dish changer, fix petrol cap, I have to operate it manually, that is a pain in the butt. Um, restore the sport wheels. Ooh, now they are beautiful, however they have that sort of anodized slash polished lip, which, yeah, can get corroded and then of course is not a cheap repair. And then center badger five for comparable upgrades as shown in your Kyle's 416 brake video. Yep, yep, yep. On board, on board. <laughs> oh, we've got, got figures, we've got figures. I did ask for figures, not everyone sent them. Uh, I bought the car for £8,500 11 years ago, and I plan on spending another 10. Well, I, I, I can't knock that. I mean, if you, you're not planning on selling it, then it makes complete and utter sense. Uh, I have a video of it being hit whilst parked by thieves, uh, but due to technology, I can't get it off my phone. <laughs> That's fine, we're only doing pictures, not videos. That's unfortunate, but I'm glad to see you got it sorted. So that is pretty much a standard car. We're seeing quite a lot of standard ones here. Now let's move to the last one. Now this is Ben of the North, Ben Griffiths. Ben of the North underscore TT on Instagram. Uh, now he's only had this a year and a half. Now this puts me to utter shame because he has done so much to this car in a very short period of time. It makes me look bad. He's also done quite a few repairs. <laughs> Now, the first picture, he actually had an original OEM hardtop in matching colours, which he sold. I know. Mental. Absolutely mental. But I believe that money was then used to do more to the car. So, can't argue with that. Dolomite car. QS wheels. 3.2 V6 um, DSG. Now, what has he got? He's had a year and a half, uh, although before that had a silver Roadster 225 for a year two. That died. Uh, so, sold or moved on to this. And this is his dream engine and color combo. No, no complaints there, mate. Um, things you love. Effortless power, no mating for a turbo. DSG means you can drive relaxingly or go all out whatever you want. Makes me smile every time I flatten the loud pedal. And it is a loud pedal. He has a very special exhaust on this. Things I hate, and there is a list. Uh, everything costs a fortune to fix, and there's always something to fix. Can you agree with that? Since owning the car, I've had to do this lot, and this is in a year and a half, a fuel pump, water pump, air con compressor, oh, and a temp sensor, thermostat, a million tires, springs, rear shocks, distant pads, spark plugs, coils, maths, steering wheel housing, managed to get new old stock, nice, catalytic converter, died to fit a sports cat, exhaust fell apart, so had, had to fit a power flow, had to. <laughs> Center dash, uh, part had snapped and it was sagging, remove carpet, dry it out, clean the drain tubes. Um, 238.2 horsepower on an incredibly hot day at Badger 5. So pretty much stock, bang on. Exhaust sounds banging loud. If you want to check him out, he's also got a YouTube channel. All the details of all the cars we've discussed today, I'll put a summary down in the description. So if you want to check out any of their parts, any names they've given things and stuff like that, things we talked about, it's all going to be down there for you. Um, what have we got here? Generally, so this future plans. Generally, I like it as it is. Um, I would like to sort some of the rust uh, that's making itself known on the sills. Tiny bit on the arch. May restore the running gear at some point. Other than that, nothing major. If I win the lottery, I'll smash a turbo on and fit air ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe not the air ride, but the turbo. I think once you get the turbo, you won't worry about stopping and going. Because you'll be going V6 noise. Bang, bang. And then... <laughs> A big exhaust out the bonnet here. Um, <laughs> modifications we've got. Let's flick through some of these pictures while we've got them here. And of course, Ben is a photographer, so there is some absolutely horrendously gorgeous photos that put all of my photos to shame. Um, so we've got here QS wet wheels. Uh, it's on its third interior. He started red, previous had cream, and then he changed it out for black. But he's on his fourth because he actually made one brown. I think he slipped up and actually sent us a picture of the brown seat fitted in the car so he said four he lies um sports cat and full d-res power flow catback system which sounds phenomenal 
Um, powder coated raw hoops, powder coated and black to blend in. I think this looks absolutely great. And you don't notice, you probably didn't notice until I mentioned that. Um, aftermarket head unit screen with CarPlay. Again, nice touch, modernized, especially if you're gonna do a lot of long road trips. We'll all be following him when we go anywhere because uh, he's gonna have Apple CarPlay with Waze. <laughs> Leather steering wheel cover, QS spats, and uh, OEM plus basically. Well, OEM plus and sounding like an absolute monster coming down the road. <laughs> uh, even though the car came with a broken Miltec, it sounded too tame and I agree because it's the V6, you may as well have either the stock exhaust or a de-resonated either stock exhaust or de-resonated sports exhaust because the resonator is where most of the sound comes from. I had a Scorpion um, resonated system on my V6 and honestly there was very little to tell between that and stock. It sounded a tiny bit noisier inside but you want that you want that V6 noise. You want to be able to go past people and, and they know you've got a V6. If they're a car people they know you've got a VR engine in there, staggered six. Whoop. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Um, it also came with a hard top but uh, after taking that off after the first winter, the car felt super light. <laughs> Realised the weight of the hardtop was making it feel nothing like it should. Sold that, haven't looked back. To be honest, you don't really buy a Roadster um, to have a roof on. So it makes complete sense. And they're not the easiest thing to lift on your own. You've got to store it somewhere. You've got to, every time you want to take it on and off, there's a two-man job. Yeah, and he said, if I add up what I've spent so far, I'll have a mini heart attack, so let's not. Yeah, I, may, I completely agree with that. Um, completely agree. Now, that is the four cars summarized. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Let's have a quick recap. So we've got, starting from the beginning, um, we've got Stephen from Aberdeen with that gorgeous Kingfisher blue V6 with the Project Zoo grill, Zwo, Z however you want to say it. We've then got Graham, old guy, from the TT Forum with that lovely Moro blue he's had from New which I think is pretty epic. Um, sort of like a stock looking OEM plus with the old Votex wheels. Then you've got Simon's black QS. Now this again, stock car, lovely, lovely bits. Um, and then of course we've got Ben of the North's modified V6. Now all of these I would say are pretty tamely modified. OEM plus, um, they were picked at random. We are going to do a Super Modders um, subscribers car showcase because there is some coming in. But I wanted something sort of reasonable to compare them with to try and see the different styles and see what you think. So there we've got a um, we've got a Roadster, we've got a V6, we've got a QS and a 225. Works out quite nicely that, doesn't it? So after watching this video, I want to know everyone watching down in the comments, even if you just put the name of their car, what car it was, and one thing you liked about it. Um, and I think that'll give the owners a nice little boost. Not that it matters because they love their cars, so it is what it is. But it's always nice to know what you think and which one you would have out of those four. It's a tough one for me. I would probably go, although I love all of them, I would probably go for the Kingfisher only because I think it just looks wicked with a V6 bumper. <laughs> I don't know. And to be honest, I'd probably keep it as is with that grill as well. I don't know why. It just really suits it. I've never been a massive fan of the grill. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all, but yeah, Kingfisher Blue for me has got to be the one. Although QS, no, I'd, I'd, I'd have them all. I'm not going to lie. And you know I'd have them all as well. If they all come for sale and I had the money, I would be buying them. But hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Um, until next week, next Wednesday, 6 p.m., same time, same place, we'll be doing a, another one, episode two. But until then, bye for now.